These are my first impressions of the Flex Run Experience 11 Next Nature by Nike. Throughout the video, I'll give you my thoughts on the shoes so far when wearing them while running, training, and casually. The shoes released in 2022, and as their name states, they are also part of the Nike Next Nature family. This means that the shoes are made up of at least 20% recycled content by weight, and this becomes more obvious with the Nike Sunburst logo at the top of the tongue and the specs throughout the details on the lacing system. The shoes fit true to size, and they are a little bit wider than I was originally expecting, which translates to them being comfortable, but not necessarily or entirely secure. And the shoes are also part of the flex slash free family of shoes from Nike, so they feature a set of Nike-free grooves at the midsole to provide a more natural experience when wearing the shoes. These grooves, or cuts as I like to call them, are located at the forefoot and they played their role while running to provide more flexibility as soon as you put them on. I am a big fan of this design since it helps with creating a more natural and smooth transition every time your foot hits the ground. And as much as this free or flex design is great, the one thing to keep in mind is that you are giving up a little bit of cushioning and this is something else that you can notice as soon as you lace the shoes up. This lack of cushioning means that you don't get a lot of responsiveness and obviously not a lot of foam which then doesn't necessarily translate well to running because your strides are getting tired a little bit quicker into a run. The shoe still has more foam and a little bit more solid foam compared to the free run 5.0 so it's a better midsole if you're looking at comparing those two but I would still not recommend this flex experience run 11 for runs longer than two miles. The foam does feel appropriate for the price point and surprisingly enough, it also combines nicely with the upper to create a solid and somewhat decent experience. And the upper, as well as the entire shoe, I guess, become loose after some time of lacing them up. So it's something to keep in mind if you don't necessarily like to lace up your shoes after doing it for the first time. And continuing with the upper, there is a decent amount of padding around the collar and the tongue is actually quite padded as well. So it creates a very pleasant and overall comfortable fit but once again not the most secure. The only major complaint that I have with the upper is that the tongue is attached right at the end of the instep and at the beginning of the toe box so like that connection at the top of the shoe. So when you're putting the shoes on and you're adjusting the tongue it pulls on this area of the shoe and it can mess with the way that the shoe fits around your foot if you're not careful. Back to the midsole there is also this wavy design slash pattern at the middle and back areas that that might seem like it helps with creating flexibility as well, but it's mostly about appearance. On that note, I do think that if Nike added more flex grooves or cuts, to the rest of the midsole, the overall experience with this shoe would be a lot more enjoyable. Now the free grooves and the wavy pattern are both part of the midsole because there isn't a separate rubber outsole on the shoe or there isn't a separate material to act as an outsole on this shoe. And this obviously translates to the grip not being the best and there are certain surfaces in which the shoes feel particularly slippery. My biggest concern when it comes to this beyond slipping and falling is what will happen after some time of using the shoe? Because you don't have an outsole, then you're looking at potentially damaging that bottom part of the midsole and that damage reaching into the rest of the midsole. This damage to the midsole could also come from training since these are pretty decent for this type of performance as well. Once again, the upper and midsole combine to provide a solid and somewhat stable experience that help with different exercises and types of training. And I truly believe that this Flex Experience 11 could be a very decent and affordable pair of shoes for the gym. But just keep in mind that the heel drop is quite noticeable because of the lack of foam at the forefoot compared to the midfoot and the heel areas. And this might obviously affect your form. And the shoe's also very light, which is something that I forgot to mention uh, when talking about running with them, which was very convenient for jumping exercises when training, but while running, it also added to that smooth and natural transition between strides. And the poor grip because of the lack of a rubber outsole also translated to training, for me specifically, for boxing training. Even with the lack of a rubber outsole though, the shoes definitely shine when wearing them casually. They're convenient for running errands and they're just overall great for walking around with them for a while, thanks to the free groove 
shoes at the forefoot. As usual, I tried them on while wearing jeans and I thought that they looked pretty decent. I just found it a little bit hard to try and match this colorway. Now, when it comes to thinking about the free slash flex family on the Nike lineup, I do think that the Flex Run 2021 is still a more solid take on what was trying to be accomplished with this shoe. But unfortunately, Nike did not release a 2022 version of the Flex Run. But if you haven't already and you want to watch the first impressions video for the Flex Run 2021, you can find the link in the description.